What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today we are working on the dually. That's right. Um, got a couple mods that I've been wanting to do and um, to be honest with you, they're not huge things. Well, they are huge things. They're going to make a big difference in my opinion. Uh, the very first thing we're going to try to do is one of the things that really bugs me about this is the fact that it's got black and then red and then chrome and then so what I would like to do is um, I already went out to my painter and talked to him about that panel on the back and uh, I also bought some door handles that uh, I'm going to color match at some point I would like to get some different mirrors because I'm not going to be towing anything that requires that but for today what I would like to do is um, these guys the fender flares now I've looked for a set of paintable these are kind of that textured finish and while you could sand those and paint them I don't know how well they're gonna hold paint so what I think I'm gonna to do today is we are going to attempt to remove these we're gonna see how bad the paint is under them, and if I can fix the paint so if I can paint correct them and make it look nice I would rather do without them but if the paint's pretty rough under there you know a lot of times these things they're held on with screws and then two-sided tape but a lot of times they going down the road they rattle and they wear a spot in the paint so we're just gonna have to take them off to see where we're at and the other thing is the front end as you can see the headlights are actually in pretty decent shape but the side markers are complete junk so we have a whole slew of stuff here we've got new lights uh the the headlights are on in the top boxes the side markers are in the bottom boxes and then we have leds because i've driven this thing a couple times at night and guys once you get used to these leds you just can't go back and i know you guys have seen me do this on several vehicles but we're doing it on this one as well and i also have the fleece performance that is the all on mod now this thing does not have fog lights but we are going to put fog lights in it down the road it's actually already wired for it but the all on mod will allow all six of them to be on at one time. But for now, I'll still be able to use the high and the low at the same time. So it, it still will do something. So we're gonna install all that stuff today. And uh, while I've got these panels off, at, like I said, I'm gonna try to paint correct them. So I'm not gonna do the whole truck, but uh, this will be a good start and it's gonna make a huge difference at night, that's for sure. Even if I have to put these black plastic pieces back on for now, um, just cleaning up the front end is going to make a huge difference. But like always, guys, I will list all this stuff in the description down below. I am a huge believer in these LEDs. I love the fleece performance all on mod. I've used it in the past. I've had great luck with it. The other thing I did was I recently, when I bought this truck, it had one key fob and one key. And um, the key fob didn't work, so I tried to reprogram it and I couldn't get it done so I bought one I actually bought two of these from Amazon and then I had my local dealership make me another key but I'll list that in the description down below nice new button and easy to program I, I probably should have showed you guys that video of me programming them but um, another really cool thing that this thing needed once you get used to keyless it's kind of hard to go away from that too but I'm gonna set you guys up on a tripod we will see if we can get these bolts out and actually they're just plastic push-ins so it should be relatively easy to get those out. I'm just kind of concerned at how bad it's going to look once we get them out. But I'm going to set you guys up on a tripod. We'll see if we can get these things loose. So it doesn't look like there's a whole lot involved here. I've got a pair of uh, panel tool removers. So basically this removes those plastic pins that uh, have the middle section just like that. And I also have for the ones like this that don't have the pull out center, I have this guy, which really makes a huge difference when you're pulling these things out. Um, you can literally just slide it in there and push this together and it releases them. So I'm going to go ahead, get this panel, all these pieces out the plastic. And then, like I said, it is two sided taped also. So I've got some fishing line and I've got my eraser wheel. I'm not sure we'll have to use the eraser wheel, but we'll just have to see as we get it apart. So as you can see, I didn't actually have to use my um, fishing line to pull that off. I was able to get enough leverage. And 
I'm I'm saying right now it doesn't look bad as far as the marring from where that um, ledge was riding. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some um, soapy water and clean this off, and then I'm going to get my eraser wheel and we're going to go over and get all that two-sided tape off, and then we'll have a better look at least of what we're dealing with. So now that we've used the eraser wheel, I'm going to use a little bit of 3M adhesive remover. I swear I go through so much of this stuff. And we're going to uh, try to get off any excess glue that's left. And I'm telling you guys, there is a couple spots. Right here there's a spot that um, looks like it wore through the paint just a little bit. But man, the rest of this looks really, really good. So I think what I'll do is I'll go grab my buffer and we'll see exactly how clean we can get it. Uh, I think I'll just start with a microfiber pad like normal and some M105 and uh, see what kind of imperfections we can take out uh, just with that. But I think, I think a lot of it's going to come out and that looks way better. So I've decided before I actually grab the buffer, I'm going to go over it with some just cheap clay bar. Uh, I got some junky stuff that um, just see if we can remove some of the contaminants before we drag the buffing compound and the uh, microfiber pad across it. So now that we went over it with the clay bar, I've got some M105 and I'm actually using a gray heavy uh, pad. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm using that M105. I'm gonna go over this and see if we can clean up a lot of these areas. This one right here, I don't think we're gonna get completely out, but that's the main one. The rest of them for sure are gonna come out.
So for the most part, just going over it a couple times with that took a majority of it out. You can see, uh, well, maybe you can see this spot right here. I don't know that you'll be able to, but I don't know that I'll be able to get that out because that's pretty deep. Uh, I might go over it a couple more times to see if I can get a little bit more of it out, but I knew that this was gonna be the case. Like I said, that plastic just, while you're going down the road, moves like this and uh, just eventually wears through. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I think this will look fine. And the truck's not perfect anyway. It's got its shares of rock chips and whatnot. So um, as we paint correct down the road, we might address this a little more, might go over it and get a little more aggressive on it. But for the most part, I think I'm finished on this side. Um, I might time lapse the other side, the whole other side, so you guys don't have to stop and listen to me, or I don't have to stop and you have to listen to me talk. So uh, we'll go through the other side, do it, and then we will uh, start on the headlights. So at this point, I think I'm good. Um, I'm not gonna go over this a thousand times. I think you could get a little more of it out. Hopefully you guys can see, maybe you can see right there, that spot right there. Um, that's one of those spots where it rubbed. I don't think you're gonna get it out. Like I said, it has a couple chips in it anyway, but it looks way better than what it did. And this paint is going to clean up really, really nicely once we paint correct this thing. Wow, it looks better. And I'm gonna leave them off for sure. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna try to find a replacement set of paintable ones. I think I'm just going to leave them off. The new wheels down the road are actually gonna set about the same. So they're gonna be under the fender, so I'm not gonna be throwing a bunch of stuff anyway. So I'm going to leave them. But let's move on to the headlights at this point. So the headlights aren't too tough. They're actually easier in these trucks than they are in the old ones um, because there's only one adjustment and that's like up and down. There's no side to side. but. You pull this lever up, slide it out. I may end up having to take this off, but I'm hoping not. That's out. Now your headlight is loose. You can go ahead and work it out, twist your bulbs to get them out of place. And the old headlight is out. Now, the cool thing about this is sometimes you can reach down in here and pop this guy loose without having to take the grill off. So down here in the bottom, there's a little section that you can pop loose and these can be twisted out as well. Oh man, that one broke. One of my ends broke off, you can see. So now that we've got that complete, I'm gonna go grab some of the new replacement bulbs that we're gonna put in here. Now, I am not going to be using LEDs in my turn lamps. So I know a lot of people have said in the past, you know, why don't you do that? Honestly, guys, I don't really care about that. It's the headlights that I'm more concerned with. Will the LEDs last longer in here? Now I do use them in my, um, the daytime running light, but as far as like the turn signals and stuff, you have to put either a different kind of flasher in or you have to put resistors in, and I just don't wanna deal with that. Now, the fact that these front ones will be halogen on the back would be if you did like LEDs on one side and not the other. Chances are you could, you wouldn't have to use that stuff because there would be enough load off the back light or the front light, but if you go to LEDs all the way around, you are gonna to have to get a different flasher or um, some sort of uh, diode to put in place. But you can see these things, they still have some water in them. They definitely need replaced. 
I'm going to go ahead and pull these bulbs out. See if I can find a place to set them here. Sometimes these guys like to stick, especially your daytime running light because it gets, there's a lot of heat there. It's on a lot. Look how charred that is in there. And I do like to use a little bit of dielectric, dielectric grease. So you'll see me put that in there as well. These just unplug. You have to pull the tab back a little bit. It's kind of hard to do with these gloves on. So now we got those out of the way. Let's go ahead and get a little dielectric grease here. And I've got my replacement 194s. Like I said, I'll list all this stuff in the description down below, but I'm going to put a little bit on it. Put it in place. And then I'm going to go grab the other bulbs because I don't the only ones I have up here is the headlights. And I got the turn signal here. And I'm not putting a ton on these. The other thing, guys, is some people say that you're not supposed to use dielectric grease on LEDs. I don't know whether that's true or not. I always have. And um, so I'm going to do that on this one as well. Uh, but they are side specific. So what I'll do is I'm going to have to have my son come up here or I'm going to have to look back at the camera to make sure that they work when I put it in drive. I'm going to go test that one real quick. So as you can see, everything worked. So we're ready to put these back in place. These are really nice replacements. Better than any of the other ones I've bought in the past, that is for sure. The other thing I like to do, guys, is I like to take a little bit of black electrical tape and I go around where the bulb goes in and that just kind of helps keep some of that moisture and condensation out of the way. So I just wrap literally where the bulb meets the actual housing and whether that helps or not, it seems to have helped in prior situations when I've done it. So I'm gonna continue it, doesn't hurt anything if it doesn't. Now I'm ready to put this guy back in and it slides in on the inside channel here first, followed by the back section definitely a big big difference there now we've got the low beam which you know they, they will plug in in the wrong socket so you kind of got to keep them separate your outer one here is a 9006 so that's your low beam and then your inner one is a 9005 so I always try to keep them up here just so I don't forget because once you pull them out you don't have that option to go back well I mean I guess you could take them back out but I mean like you have no idea where they went. So that one's there. Pull the other one out. And guys, I've had really, really good luck with this brand. Um, Oxbeam has been really good. I've got a couple sets for other cars too. So just know that down the road, you're gonna see a couple videos for that as well. But you are gonna have to fish them back in there. And it's I'm telling you guys right now, it's going to be a really, really close fit. I've got to unwrap my headlight bulb, um, but we'll put them in there and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, these housings do actually come with new bulbs, but they're not good enough. Or at least I'm not going to use them. Let's see if we can get these things lined up in here. You want your light to face up and down. So... When you're looking at it, it needs to be facing like that. That is the correct way to be oriented. So just make sure that when you're putting them in, that's the way they're, they're facing. You may have to turn them a couple times to get them right where you want them. And that is correct. All right, so now this is the fun part. I'm hoping that we don't have to trim Sometimes you have to trim to get these things to fit in there the way you want them to. 
There's a little channel on the bottom that they set in. But it looks like we're going to get lucky here and we're not going to have to trim it. Probably should have put my gloves back on. It is a snug fit though, I will say that. should have taken a little bit of sandpaper and cleaned these pens down a little bit. That probably would help. But I like to leave this in place until you get them in, installed. To me, it uh, just keeps you from scratching if you were accidentally to drop it or it to bang up against something. But man, guys, this looks, this looks really good. Let's go test them. All right, there's the dam. this and there's the bright all right it's working so now we'll move on to the other side and uh, hopefully it'll go just as good Now that we got all the headlights in, let's put this fleece performance um, six high mod on. So you take that guy off and if you flip this over, it'll talk about, this is your high lamp uh, relay. This is your fog light and then low and so on. So basically what we have to do is we have to take these relays out and I'm hoping, yeah, I may have to go get a pair of pliers because my grip is not good. I got one, got the high out. And there's actually, I'm sorry, there's not one for the fog lights in here. I'm gonna have to go grab a pair of pliers. Let me go grab a pair of pliers and we'll get this other one out. All right, let's try this again. So anyway, there's not a uh, fog lamp one in here because this truck doesn't currently have fog lights, but it is, it does have the uh, relays for the fog lights. I'm gonna have to take that one out too. These things are in there, that is for sure. So all you have to do is just lay this guy in place and then we put all our relays back down. It literally sandwiches every one of these. And some people have said they've had issues with this. Guys, I ran this on my Tahoe and never had one single problem. So we're gonna try it, we're gonna test it out and I'll show you kind of how it works. So let's test this to make sure it works. So what should happen is, so we should have our high, or our low beams. And then we, when we hit our brights, the high should stay, or the low should stay on. And we should have both. So normally, like I said, guys, we would have um, our fog lights on down here, but we don't have any fog lights even though it's pre-wired There's literally a wire dangling there. So down the road. We'll put fog lights in it But I'll come out here when it's a little later and we'll take a look at it. But for right now um, ah, It's it's definitely a lot better looking especially with the sides I'll probably wait because it's so dark to show you guys the sides tomorrow, but um, Man, it's looking good so anytime you put new headlights in, uh, it's a good idea to re-aim them because the, the housings, when they ship them, they just kind of adjust them to a generic area and put them in the box. So generally they are not where they need to be. So the best way to do this, guys, is you back up 25 feet, and I suggest using a garage door. So I've got my garage door up there. I've backed up 25 feet to the actual 
headlight itself. Now, if you look really close, there's a dot right here in the center. That allows you to measure from there to the ground. Now on this truck, it's 41 inches. And so if you go up to the garage door 25 feet away, you can put a 41 inch mark, but then you need to go four inches below that and that is where your headlights need to aim. And I generally like to bring the left one down just a hair more because that's the one that's facing oncoming traffic and we do have some pretty bright bulbs. But that is how you aim it. Um, as far as adjustments on this, there's only one adjustment and that is up and down. You do not have a side to side adjustment on this. So this guy right here is a Torx bit and all you have to do is spin that either one way or the other to get your corresponding line. Now the top of my blue tape is 37 inches which is four inches below the 41 that we measured and like i said we are 25 feet back so once it gets a little darker i'm going to come out here and aim these get them where they need to be and then we will be all finished up and i also at that same time kind of show you guys a, you know kind of an overview of what they look like and then in the morning we'll come out and take a look at the paint and how much better it looks all the all together so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the lights. It's almost dark enough and you can see how much further down the right one is, the passenger side that it is than the driver's side. At least I hope you can see that in the camera. All we are doing guys is we are adjusting this with the T15. Like I said, there's only an up and down. There's not a uh, side to side adjustment. So I'm gonna to attempt to adjust this. And uh, honestly, it's a little bit easier for me to see looking through the camera. So I'm hoping that I can get it to that point. And I'm just wanting to go to that line, try to center it, at least on this side. And that's pretty close to where I wanna be on the passenger side, about right there. And the driver's side, to be honest with you, is about where I want it. So I think that'll work. I'm not even going to make any adjustments on the driver's side because, like I said, I want it just a hair lower, and uh, that's pretty much what I've got right now. And you can see it popped, so I may have to readjust it one more time. Sometimes they move a little bit, and uh, they're not seated completely. So I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit more since it popped and went down on that side. I, I'm sure you guys can tell that on camera, but we'll come back out in the morning. Um, actually, I'll tell you what. I'll bring you back out here before or when it gets a, a lot darker and you guys can see the difference because it's going to be amazing at this point i think it's dark enough honestly that you guys can see the difference so i'm going to turn them on oh my gosh it's so much crazier look at that and we'll take it for a ride down the road here but what a huge difference and i'm sure i'm blinding you in the camera but let's take it down the road and um, really see the difference. I probably should have waited for it to be a little bit darker. But definitely a difference here. One of the first things anybody should do, in my opinion, is put these lights in. And I'm waiting on a car here. so much brighter at night now this thing has no tint on the side glass and it also has no tint on the windshield which most of my stuff normally has windshield tint so i may have to uh well i say i may have to it's definitely going to have the windshield tinted and uh the rest of it tinted at some point the problem is my window tint guy is um kind of locked up right now because of this whole covid deal but you guys can definitely tell a difference, or at least I hope you can. I really wish that I had fog lights in the thing because that would make a big difference too. Um, like I said, down the road, I'll do a video and do fog lights, but we'll uh, cut to tomorrow morning. I'll come out and we'll walk around and take a look at it, how much better it looks without the fender flares and with the new lights and uh, kind of wrap this thing up. All right, guys, it's the next morning and I'm sorry, but it's really windy out, but I'm thinking then I'm gonna keep the fender flares off. It definitely looks a lot better. And uh, like I said, sorry if you're getting a bunch of wind, but I don't know why it's so windy today. I should have washed the rest of the truck to make it look good. It does look really, really nasty right now, but 
I think the uh, I think the fender flares are gonna stay gone. Like I said, there's a couple spots. I don't know if I can catch it in the sun where you can see there's a spot there that's marred and then another one right here. But as I paint correct this, I think a little more of that'll come out. But the headlights for sure make a huge difference at night. Not to mention, you know, the old ones were all cloudy and messed up. And then um, that key fob. So we got a couple things accomplished on this thing. And uh, I think it's gonna clean up really well. I'm gonna start, since I have another driver now with the Suburban, I'm going to probably start tearing the interior out and detail in the interior. It needs some work, that is for sure. This is probably the nastiest vehicle at this place. Um, it's gross. And it's not terrible bad, but it's just, it's in dire need of a cleanup, that's for sure. But let me know what you guys think. Do you like it without the flares? I think this, like I said, it keeps me from having to buy a set of flares and paint them because I was not gonna keep those black flares. I just think it looks, I don't know. I just don't like the look of it. And honestly, at night, um, a couple people have talked about LEDs up in the top, and so I think I might end up doing LEDs in my like lights on the roof. But um, definitely looking better, guys. We've got a we got a long road ahead of us with this thing, and um, I'm not in a big hurry. You know, it's we've got other drivers and we got other projects going on with the with the truck here, so um, not in a huge hurry to get it accomplished. But like I said, go down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Um, if you did enjoy this video, like always, guys, please smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, guys, you got to hit that subscribe button. While you're down there doing that, make sure you ring that bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video. And, well, stay tuned to see this and all these other projects come together.